Earlier in the week, the NFL had its 2013 Best and Fairest Awards. The Frank Rosbrook Trophy was shared for the second year in a row. It was Cameron Cloak and Mark Lynch who won the award this year. Of course, Cloak, the second Bandura player in as many years to win after uh, their big ruckman, Manny Dennis, tied with Bronnie Davies, a skipper of Northcote Park last year, and Lynch, the second Tiger in three years after Michael Finn won it in 2011. Two players, completely different players. Cloak, a, a big, big forward who's such a presence on the football field. Uh, Mark Lynch, one of those speedsters off the half-back line for the Tigers. He had a great year in his, in his first year for the club, and, and Cloak, well, he's been a standout player for the best part of three years for Bandura. Well, Lynch is the interesting one. He's come across from the Duda Stars and the ADFL, and he's been fantastic across half-back with his ball use. Uh, he's, he's always in the right position. He's one of those both players who always seems to find himself right at the, the correct drop of the ball. Uh, he's a really nice kick uh, going inside forward 50. He seems to be very composed in traffic and a deserving winner. Every game I've seen Heidelberg so far this year, Mark Lynch has been in the, in the best uh, one or two players. On, on the ground as a very deserving winner and uh, as for Cameron Cloak well he's just a domineering presence as you just said and it's very hard for any side to contend with Cameron Cloak when he's up and about as we've seen throughout the final series so far this year and uh, he'll be hoping there's one more big performance left in him on Saturday. No doubt that and he was sensational in the grand final two years ago in that last quarter against Heidelberg that, that Bandura got up of course and famously won he, his final quarter was one of the best quarters I think anyone's played in, in a grand final in the Northern Football League. So he was dominant. Lynch, certainly his back half of the year was great. Mm. And I thought for him as well, I know they went out in straight sets, but his two finals yeah. were the best of any Tiger. There's no doubting that. So they'll be looking forward to watching more of, of Mark Lynch in 2014. Rounding out the placings was Ryan Willits. I think one of the, the fans is probably going in. He fell one vote shy on 16 votes behind Cloak and also Lynch on 17. And then Michael Finn on 15 votes rounded out the top three place getters. So four three Ruckman in the top four. Paddy Fitzgerald was also in the top five as well. So those are uh, of the top five players, four of them are, are Ruckman or, or Tors in, in clog sense are, are Ruckman forward. So the big men really stood out this year. And when you look at all four of those players, they all are big domineering presences for their team. Cloak, Willett, Finn and Fitzgerald, they're, they're big fellas and they really command a fair bit of space and, and, and command the ball from their teammates. And, and you can see uh, through the results this year why they've been so effective. In Division 2, the winner of the Best and Fairest Award was Mernda skipper Rowan Davies. 21 votes for him. He's second Best and Fairest in as many years. He won the Division 3 medal last year in Mernda's Premiership year. He was, well, he missed the final four games of the year, so he had a really dominant opening three months, and with those 21 votes, he was well clear by the time that uh, injury forced him out of the competition. Lionel Proctor has now won two Best and Fairest Awards. I think he's run it up twice as well this year, missing out by just one vote for, to go back to back. He polled 20 votes. Kalen Brown and Shane Harvey tied for 16 votes. There's some really good names amongst that, uh, that top three there, and those four all had great years. All-star players as well. Shane Harvey, once again, another big haul of goals in 2013. Uh, after you know last year, a big haul of goals, and the previous year, a big haul of goals. Shane Harvey, again, once again, uh, dominating the Division Two competition. Kalen Brown and Lionel Proctor, we, we, we just touched on the Fitzroy Stars in the Division Two wrap-up, but... Uh, Kalen Brown, absolutely outstanding inside midfielder. He's one of those players that you just love to watch. He really cracks in. Um, and Lionel Proctor, we've seen on many occasions being a superstar player. And Rowan Davies, we saw him in the grand final last year for Division Three, and this year he's just backed it up again. He's a wonderful player to watch. Uh, all of those players deserving of being in the top four. Well, hopefully Rowan Davies is back for Moonda last year. He wasn't at the awards ceremony on Monday. He has uh, gone and, uh, gone into the army, actually, and uh, hopefully for Moonda he, he's back. Otherwise... Uh, it's a, it's a big blow and, and uh, it's very him. hard to, uh, to cover a player of the ilk of, of Rowan Davies. Division 3, where it was a runaway winner. That was Watsonia playing coach Lockie Dornoff. 10 20, votes. 26 votes. Cool. He holds 10 clear of James McLean Brunton, who had 16, and also uh, in th third place from the Thomastown Football Club, Michael DiPatista. So really, uh, all youngsters, they're all under the age of, of 22. So it's great to see some of the emerging talent of Division 3 really having a big impact on the competition, but Dornoff for mine was, was the clear favourite going in and I think he was very much a deserving winner. Well, having having watched part of the Division 3 competition this season and most of the Division 3 finals, uh, absolutely outstanding watching Lockie Dornoff go about his work. He's just a real leader amongst men and, and you can see the way he's transformed his group into what they are now. Watsonia were a rabble last year and this season you can all, all you can say about it is they're a fantastic football team uh, run, run by a, a great player and a, and a great man who's who's uh, done some wonderful things this season and should look to continue to do that next year, I would assume. Well, he's turned them from Wooden Spooner in Division 3, so as low as, as you can get, and they're now the 2013 Club of the Year. They were a grand finals, lost by a point. 
He, of course, is the uh, competition best and fairest winner as well. You hear him speak, and it's mm. he's so much more mature than the twenty-one years. He's twenty-one years of age, and uh, a real credit to to what Sonia. And I think anyone who heard his acceptance speech saw how humble he was as a person, still putting the team first there. You can catch actually a couple of those interviews that Brad Emmett actually filmed from the night as well. So do uh, check around the website as well. Brad's put together a great package talking to some of the best and fairest winners from the night. Uh, in the netball, there was six winners, of course, on the night. Sophie Atkinson from the Fitzroy Stars won it in Section 1. The Section 2 award went to Casey Barnes, who had a great year. She did the trifecta, captain of a premiership, best on ground in the grand final, and a competition best and fairest award. Emma Parker of St Mary's won the award in Section 3. St Mary's undefeated throughout the whole competition, won the premiership. They had uh, the top two place getters in the uh, in the Section 3 competition and a third was, was equal third with the St Mary's player in Claire Milner Tiley with Holly Wilson of Bandura. So three of the top four as such were St Mary's players. In Section 4, Stephanie Oakford from Epping was the clear winner of 25 votes. In Section 5, another St Mary's girl, Claire Derham, who as well won a premiership on Friday night. The first two premierships for the St Mary's senior club as such, going to the netballers, of course, the under-19s fell just short in the footy on the Saturday, and uh, Shadal Hood from the Fitzroy Stars winning the award in Section 6. So it was great, the expansion we had in, in netball this year to go to a sixth division. There will be a Northern Netball League commencing in October. It will include a junior competition, so it's great the leaps and bounds that's taken off in, and... In, in the football sense, you can check out the teams of the year all on the website as well for Division 1, 2 and 3. Congratulations to all those 22 selected in each three sides and to the three coaches, Jason Heatley from Northcote Park in Division 1, uh, Travis Hodgson for the Fitzroy Stars in Division 2 and also Dean Haydock, the Premiership Coach in Division 3 of Panton Hill. And finally, the Coaches Player of the Year, an award that's highly regarded, of course. It's, it's great to get the recognition from those on the outside who are probably putting so much time into stopping you each, each Saturday, but... Gavin Connolly won it in Division 1, and, and his season was a great one, and I'm expecting to win, I think it would be his fourth Alton Best and Fairest this year if he could get up. It was basically a lot of the, the, the fact that he had a great year was a reason why Alton went on to play finals footy for the first time since 2010. He's a great player, Gav. He gets tagged every week, but he seems to bring out great performances every week and seems to be named in the best two or three players every time Alton go out there on the park. And uh, fa Another fantastic one to watch, as we mentioned, with the few players we mentioned earlier. Shane Harvey winning the award in Division 2. Just one vote clear of Malcolm Dowell of the Fitzroy Stars and Scott Dowell of Layla, who was looking to go back-to-back. We all know what a star Harvey is, and I think it was disappointing that he couldn't play in the in the preliminary final. It, North might have felt it might have been a bit different. They did go down in a close one to Whittlesey had of Harvey been there. It would have been interesting to see what North could have done had Harvey been there. At, as it were, they uh, were bundled out, but if he had been there, it may have been a different story. We never know. And in Division 3, Dylan Ronalds winning the award from St Mary's. St Mary's obviously not, not the best year for them, given they went backwards from playing finals in two, for two years and then missed out this year, but... With their under-19 talent, under talent coming through, the reserves are also a very strong side. I'd, I'd imagine St Mary's will be on the improve in 2014. So that's the wrap-up from the NFL Best and Fairest. But as I said, Brad Emmett's put together a package that's on the website, nfl.org.au, so make sure you check that out. All the other news and features are around as well. We'll see you at the footy on Saturday afternoon. Preston City Oval, a place to be for all the Division One Grand Finals, and we'll be back in a week's time to wrap up all the year. Thank you for tuning in to NFL TV.